the slides. Yes, we can. Yes. Great, thank you. Okay, so I will I will tell you a little bit about Via Core and the technology behind the systems that is, as, as you know, based in SPR, so first person resonance um, principle. Yeah, and, and so we'll go through the, the first of all, the introduction of the, of the technology, SPR technology and Biaco technology. I will then talk a little bit about the common types of, of Biaco analysis that we can do with these instruments, and then I will present you a well, brief introduction of the big range of applications that we can do with these systems, okay? I will focus on basically on drug discovery, advanced applications in biotherapeutics development, and I will just give you a few a few views uh, regarding the the amount of of work that that has been doing uh, in in COVID nineteen research with with the systems. Okay, and then finally I will present you just two slides with the uh, uh, product range of, of the ecosystem that we have. Let's start with the introduction to the technology itself. So we know that uh, bi biological interactions are real-time uh, binding events, okay? Where biomolecules or even small molecules associate with and dissociate from other molecules. So we know that in, 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 in the body, in the, in the nature, molecules are interacting with each other every time. And very rarely they, they are in equilibrium. So molecules, yes, they interact with one molecule and then they move to, to interact with, uh, with other molecule and then they drive all the bio bio biological processes, so, so to say. So what via core systems do is that they enable us to monitor in real time in a, in a label free mode these biological interactions, okay, based in the surface plasmon resonance principle. So why is it important to, to monitor these biological interactions? Probably most of you, you already know, since you work in, in this field. But for example, in the protein research field, we can get to know the, the relationship between the structure of the molecules and their function. We can get to know how signaling cascades in, in our organism uh, work, with which protein interact with the following one and so on to trigger, for example, a, a response in the body. In the drug discovery field, these systems allow us to identify molecules that bind to and affect proteins associated with disease. So we are calling off target, targeting molecules. So we are looking for molecules that target specifically one important protein in, 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 in our body, for example. But also via core are applied in, into, into the industry. Uh, so uh, via core systems also play a big role in, in development and, and quality control of, of biotherapeutics, or, um, biomolecules, because they allow us to characterize the biologic, biologic drugs to understand the mechanism of action of, of these, of these uh, molecules. If we think about, uh, for example, antibodies, we normally via core systems are applied very, very use uh, very use, uh, usually to understand the interaction between uh, the antibody, the drug, and the FC receptors, okay, to, to get to know the uh, effector function of, of, the, of the antibodies. And then we can measure these critical quality attributes of, of the product. So how can we describe molecular interactions or how, how these molecular interactions are described? So we can talk about the affinity, affinity for an interaction that gives give us an idea about the strength of this interaction between two molecules. And we can also talk about binding kinetics. Kinetics give us an idea about how fast or how slow do the molecules interact and then the complex dissociates. But also we can talk about concentration to get to know how much of a given molecule is active in our sample, okay? And understanding as activity as the ability to bind the target molecule. But we can also get to know the specificity of, of the molecules, the specificity of the interaction, okay? How specific is one molecule to recognize 
a particular uh, molecule from a particular species or particular family, for example. Then if we go to 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 get to know the, the, this technology, the technology uh, in which uh, the ecosystems are based on, we can say that these systems are based in four main uh, core components. Okay, the first one would be the sensor chip. We will talk about uh, this these components right now, but the sensor chip will provide us the surface on which everything is going to happen. Okay, on the sensor chip, we will have the mo one of the molecule attached, and then we will study how a second molecule interact or not uh, with this molecule that we have from the sensor chip. Then we have the microfluidic system. These systems are based in, in microfluidics, providing a continuous flow of, of samples and reagents over the sensor chip surface. So in that way, we assure that the concentration of the molecules that we are uh, studying is maintained constant. OK, so is the way to uh, maintain or to assure that we are always measuring the same concentration of, of the molecules. Microfluidic system we will see later on, but consists of a tiny series of channels that address all solutions and reagents to the sensor chip surface. Then we have the detection unit that is based in the SPR principle, so resonance principle. And finally, we have the software that are very user-friendly software to control the system and evaluate the results. So if we go one by one, basically, the sensor chip uh, in, in Biaco are based basically on a glass support on which we have a thin metal layer. In our case, we, we use gold as, as, as metal, since this is the most appropriate metal uh, to, to exhibit or to present the, uh, the SPR phenomena. OK, on this layer, on, 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 the, on the metal, we have a matrix. In most of, of our chips, we have a dextran matrix, but uh, just to mention that we have uh, very well, uh, dif different surfaces with different matrices and different chips uh, with uh, different proteins on it already prepared. Microfluidic system is what we call the integrated microfluidic cartridge. And basically, as I have mentioned, it controls the delivery of sample and solutions to the sensor chip surface, where we are going to have one of the molecules attached. So this is a miniaturized system consisting of a series of channels and a series of valves. These valves are pneumatically operated and can open or close to allow uh, the flow of the, of the solutions to the different channels that are created on, on the sensor chip, okay, as, as it's represented in this figure, OK? So when the microfluidics comes into contact with the chip surface, it creates a series of channels on the surface. And it is in here on where we are going to have our molecules and where the interaction will happen. So there are some advantages of microfluidics. Why are we using microfluidics? Because, well, they require very low volume of reagents and they have very small dead volumes. There's minimal dispersion of the samples. We can create, as I have shown here, multiple surfaces on one chip. And this allows us also to do, or to the system, to the inline reference abstraction that is quite important to get accurate results. Okay, we need normally to have a reference as a control. Since we are working with very small volumes and very tiny channels, this also allows very fast temperature equilibration times of the solutions. We can, for example, in these systems, we can have our samples in a sample compartment that is refrigerated, and then we can run the analysis at a different temperature, normally 25 degrees or even 37 degrees, that is a physiolog physiological temperature. So the samples are or reach the temperature of analysis very quickly thanks to the tiny channels and low volumes that we are using. So the detection principle is based in surface plasma resonance. And basically, this, this phenomena is, is a phenomena that occurs when we have a polarized light beam, okay, that heats or strikes 
to a metal surface. In this case, it's a gold surface, and then this beam is reflected. But when the when this light beam hits the surface, then it creates this resonance of the gold metal plasmons. Okay. So at a specific angle, angle, this light energy is transferred to the electrons to the, in the gold, and then is when the plasmons plasmons are formed. When this happens, when this occurs, then the intensity of the reflected light is reduced at a certain angle, and this angle is what we call the SPR angle. Okay. So. How the systems detect uh, molecular interactions. So what 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 happens? So on one side of the sensor chip, I I, I just forgot to to mention sorry about this, but uh, in here we have represented the sensor chip that is so to say uh, downward. So we have the glass support in here on on the detection unit uh, side, and then on the fluidic side we have the gold layer, and it is on the gold surface where we have the matrix and where we are going to have one of the molecules attached, okay? That is represented in here in green. So then when we flow the sample through the fluidics, then if there is interaction between molecules in the sample and the molecule that we have in on, on the chip surface, then the mass on the chip surface increases and this provokes oh, a change in the SPR angle. Okay, and this is what the system detects. So the systems where they detect is the change of the minimum reflected light. Okay, and then basically this shift is uh, is represented as a derivative in the form of the sensorgram. Okay, the sensorgram is the plot that we get from the systems. The change, this change in the SPR angle is proportional to the change in mass concentration at the sensor chip surface. Let's see how this the, this, the binding is, is presented in the system. So, as I have commented, the plot that we get from the system is what we call the sensorgram, and the sensorgram represents the binding response versus time. Remember that we are monitoring the interaction in real time. So we are monitoring what is going on in every second, in every moment. We use in Biacor uh, a particular terminology. We call the molecule that is attached to the surface the ligand, and then the molecule that is injected in solution the, the analyte. So in a very first moment, we should have the ligand immobilized on the chip surface, and then it's when we normally flow a, a running buffer to create a baseline. The conditions at which the interaction will happen are defined by the running buffer, basically. So the conditions of the running buffer will define how the interaction will occur. So once we create the baseline, we can proceed to inject the sample. And if in the sample there are analyte molecules that interact with the analyte that we have on the chip, then we will monitor and we will record a positive signal because the mass on the chip will increase. Okay, and this time during which we are injecting the sample is what we call the association phase. Okay, this time we are injecting the sample at a certain concentration of analyte molecules. But then, at a, as a, at a certain time, we will stop the sample injection, and it will be ra running buffer flowing over the surface again. So at this moment, the sample concentration is zero. Is zero. It's only buffer running over the surface, and then we'll. This, this will allow us to monitor the spontaneous dissociation of the complex in the conditions of the running buffer that we are using. Okay, So then if from here we can have a complete information regarding the interaction, the association of the molecules and the dissociation of the molecules in the conditions of the running buffer that we are using and in the conditions of the, the temperature condition that we are using as well. Uh, most of the times, we would, we would like to analyze several samples, several concentrations of the samples. We would need to include a regeneration step, okay, to completely remove all the analyte molecules that are bound to the chip surface and be able to reuse the surface. Okay? So, I mentioned that we have the sensor chip, microfluidics, 
the detection system and then the fourth pillar is the software. And in fact, we are talking about two software. Uh, we have the control software and the evaluation software. With the control software, these are very flexible and easy to use software. They are quite intuitive, uh, user friendly. And for example, the control software, we have a series of templates uh, to, to create uh, experiments uh, for different type of analysis, different applications. We have a, a lot of flexibility when we try to design the, the, the essays and, and via graphical programming. And yeah, we have many, many uh, templates to, to create the methods. And then uh, the evaluation software, we have also a lot of workflows or dedicated tools for evaluation of specific assays. And we have also tools to apply, for example, solvent correction, where we are working with uh, organic solvents in the samples. Uh, we have automatic alignment of sensor grounds, molecules, uh, modules for a variety of applications. So all of this is, is automated. Basically, when we go to, to, to result evaluation, we just need to select the data we would like to, to analyze and then just click and select the options that we have in, in the in the in the software and then the evaluation will be made for us basically. The only thing that we have to do in the end is just a visual check and quality control. Okay. But we we also have quality control indicators in the in the software just to tell in to tell us whether the for example the kinetic of infinite analysis whether the fit is acceptable or for example for concentration analysis whether the calibration curve, in case we, we use a, a standard molecule, uh, is acceptable as well. Okay, so yeah, we have traffic lights for kinetic fitting, for example, and sensitivity analysis. Good. So, what are the benefits of of the via core SPR systems? So, we, as we have already mentioned, but uh, these are label-free systems. That means that. We don't need to work with labels. We don't. We don't need to label our molecules, so we can measure the binding properties of unmodified substances. Okay, and thanks to this, we can save time and workload because we won't need to spend time labeling the molecules. This is a real-time te real-time technique, so we see the binding as it happens. We can get unique information of binding characteristic on and off rates. That means association velocity and the velocity with the complex uh, dissociates for any size of biomolecule. OK, so uh, the systems we have currently in the portfolio, they are, they are very sensitive. Uh, uh, and uh, we can analyze binding uh, for, for, for any kind of uh, um, size of, of biomolecule, even down to ions. OK. The fact that we are monitoring the interactions in real time allow us to study even slow and fast interactions. Okay, these kind of interactions, uh, depending on the techniques and methodology that we use, we may lose this information. For example, we think in, in LISAs, uh, in, in which we should follow a series of incubation times and, and washing steps. Then depending on the time that we let the system uh, uh, for the incubation, then may, we may lose some uh, interactions that happen very slow and the other way around. Uh, in the washing steps, we may lose molecules that dissociate very quickly. Okay. Uh, finally, this is a contact-free technique. So it's non-invasive to the, to the sample. That allows us to measure interactions even when working with opaque or color samples without losing sensitivity and accuracy. Uh, just to present you that we can analyze interactions between a wide range of, of, of molecules, okay, from most typical protein proteins, but we can also um, analyze nucleic acids, lipids and membrane associated molecules, sugars, small molecules, so small chemical entities, low molecular compounds, but we can also uh, work with whole cells and virus and bacteria, so we can analyze uh, interactions involving this kind of entities. On the sensor, and that is the product that we get um, from the system, we can get a wealth of information regarding the interaction. We can get to know the kinetics of the interaction. We can get the affinity, the quantity uh, of active molecules that we have on the, on the sample, for example. Yes, as a 
brief comparison between uh, Via Core versus ELISA, as, and as Ligand Bandina says, is to present the benefits of, of monitoring the interactions in real time. Since, for example, with Via Core, we can get to know many information or much information that we cannot get uh, to know with, with ELISA. Like we, we can get to the, the data, kinetic data, we can measure interactions with uh, rapid of rate, as I have mentioned. We can measure numbers of uh, sequential binding events, so complex formation of, uh, of complexes, uh, protein complexes. Okay, direct binding assay as well, since we don't need to work with a secondary antibody in, in this case in BIACO. Okay, we can just uh, measure the molecular direct molecular binding directly. So I will present, uh, I will present you now some common types of, of BIACO analysis type of experiments or analysis that we can do with, with, with Viaco. We can study the affinity of the interaction I have mentioned that will give us an idea of how strong the interaction is. We can study the kinetics to get a, a, an idea about how fast um, a molecules interact, concentration, how much active molecule we have in, in the sample, specificity, and we can also do com or run comparison studies to understand how similar two molecules are in terms of binding a specific target molecule. Okay. So when we go, when we think about concentration analysis in BIACO, we can run concentration analysis uh, in the standard way, that is uh, using a calibration curve. That means that in this case, what we would need to have is we would need to have a standard molecule with known concentration and then in the same way as we do with uh, with other techniques, we will prepare a series of dilutions of this standard molecule and inject into the system. Then we will record the response, the binding response to the target molecule, and from this binding response of the different concentrations of the standard molecule, we can create a calibration curve. Okay, then we can inject our sample with unknown concentration of analyte molecules, and then just by monitoring the response, the binding response, we can get to know the concentration of this molecule. Okay, But we can also measure concentration of active molecules in our sample with a, a methodology that is particular and, 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 and from the ecosystem that is called the calibration-free concentration analysis. And this is very useful when we don't have this kind of standard molecule. Okay, we don't have a standard with non concentration because maybe we are uh, working with a new molecule, a, a new mutant, and that we have prepared, then we, we don't have such, such a standard. Okay, so we can just make use of this type of analysis to quantitate this, the, the active proteins on the chip. Okay, so what does the system do here? So it determines the concentration of these molecules from the initial binding rate, okay? And from a series of equations and, and, and derivatives, the system is able to determine the active concentration of the molecules in the sample, okay? Then probably the most typical uh, sort of analysis that uh, are run with vehicle systems are the studies of kinetics and affinity. And let's try to understand what affinity and kinetics are. So affinity determines how much complex is from at the equilibrium. The equilibrium is uh, that phase, the steady state phase, in which association and dissociation events are balanced. Okay. And kinetics determine whether a complex forms or dissociates within a given time span. Okay. So the on rate or association rate give us information about how fast the interaction interact and the off rate or the association rate give us an idea about how fast the complex dissociates or what is the same how uh, stable is the complex okay. so why is important to study kinetics uh because with, with the kinetics we we can get much more information than just knowing the, the affinity, the KD, what we call the KD. Okay, from the kinetics, we will determine the on rate and the off rate, and from these two terms, we can get to know the 
KB, what we call the affinity. Okay, and for example, in this in this plot, we we have represented uh, on on the y axis in the uh, y axis we have the uh, on rate and the x axis the off rate, and you can see that um, different interactions with the same affinity represented by, the, by these diagonal lines they can have very different kinetics. Okay. So same affinity can be resolved into different on and off rates representing inter different interaction kinetics. And why is kinetics important to bi biology? Because we know that biological processes, processes are dynamic at rarely in equilibrium state. Okay. So the on rate uh, from the kinetics of the interaction represents the molecular recognition between the molecules. And the off rate reflects the binding complexity stability, as I have mentioned. So, thanks to the kinetics, and by knowing the kinetics, we can link the structure of the molecules to their functions. And finally, we can get a better understanding of the biological mechanisms. And we can study kinetics in, in, in different ways with, with Biaco. Okay? We can run the classical. Uh, Kinetic analysis that, that is the, what we call multicellular kinetics, but uh, the, these systems of the software the, uh, for preparation of the method, but also for the evaluation results, also allow us to run what we call the single cyclic kinetics, okay, in which the different sample concentrations are injected sequentially one after the other, okay, so we don't need to regenerate the surface in between the, uh, the different in, uh, sample injections. OK, so this allow us to uh, well, study difficult interactions and it will reduce assay development time since we don't need to uh, find out the optimal regeneration conditions for the sensor chip surface. This will reduce also sample uh, consumption since. Well, uh, basically, for example, if we if we are running a, a, a capture approach in which we capture the ligand molecule on the chip first and then we inject the analyte. In a single cycle kinetics, we just need to capture the ligand molecule once per cycle. Okay. In the multi cycle kinetics, we will need to capture the ligand molecule in every single cycle. And well, single cycle kinetics is very an excellent uh, test or an excellent approach for first shock kinetics. That means that from one first experiment, we can get to know quite a lot of information regarding the interaction. <clears throat> so, well, we can, as I have mentioned, we can determine affinity from the steady state, but also we can uh, determine affinity I, from the kinetics, okay? So, and here I present you an, an example of a series of uh, sexograms corresponding to increasing concentration of, of uh, particular uh, molecule interacting with the target molecule that we have on the chip, okay? And we have this kind of sensor graphs, and from this type of plot of, of graph, we can determine affinity from the steady state of uh, this, this, these curves, okay? By representing the binding response versus the concentration, and the system then will fit this curve Using a, a interaction model, a steady state interaction model that is already in in the in the software. So we just need to select the interaction model that we, we would like to apply, and the system will give us uh, the affinity of the interaction. But we can also study or determine the affinity fr from the on rate and off rate of the interaction. Okay, and again, the only thing that we need to do is just select the interaction model we would like to apply, and the system will do the calculations for us to determine uh, the, K, the K on rate, off rate, and KD. But we can also run thermodynamic analysis with these systems. Since uh, via core systems, uh, we can work from 4 to 40 or 4 to 45 degrees, depending on the system. Okay, So we can run the analysis or, or state interactions at these duration temperatures. So yes, by running the same kinetic analysis at different temperatures, we can get information regarding the thermodynamic of the analysis. Okay? Basically, we can get the data uh, regarding the enth entropy of the interaction, the enthalpy, and it gives free energy. Okay, So from affinity analysis, we can get 
the thermodynamics at equilibrium. And for kinetic analysis, we can have the transition state thermodynamics. So then I will just uh, give you a, a, a brief uh, presentation of the uh, wide range of application of this technology. And I will focus basically on drug discovery and um, biotherapeutics uh, research. But just to mention that BIACO is, is applied from the very basic research, okay, to, to get to know, for example, as I, we have already mentioned, the relationship between the functional the structure and function of the molecules to characterize uh, the molecular interaction from the very beginning. But also in the biologics and small molecule discovery, we can run um, screening projects, uh, prioritize uh, uh, molecules uh, to be used as, uh, as, as potential drugs, for example, optimize heats and leads based on the binding affinity and kinetics and selectivity of these molecules to the target molecule, okay? And finally, in the biologics and development and manufacturing field, we can get to know the critical quality attributes of the molecules, or we can monitor the drug release testing and or, or, or use vehicle for QC, uh, critical uh, uh, quality control of the, of, the, of the products. Okay, so uh, the use of vehicle uh, systems in drug discovery, well, you, you will see that uh, these this systems are, are applied in, in, in in uh, for many applications in, in in this field so we know that uh, the drug discovery trends nowadays are basically moving towards new targets uh, such as uh, gpcs okay g protein uh, couple receptors or uh research working in drug discovery they are trying to use traditional targets in, in novel ways and finally there is a big interest in develop small molecular inhibitors against protein-protein interactions, okay, to disrupt this kind of protein-protein of interactions. Application examples in drug discovery, for example, in, GPS, in GPCR characterization, antibody screening, antibody characterization, low molecular weight uh, compounds screening or fragment screening. From the studies with vehicle systems, we can get information regarding the complex formation, as, I, as we have seen, complex stability, but also we can get an idea about the target resistance time, target occupancy, binding strength. Binding strength is what we call the affinity in the end. So, vehicle analysis are applied through all the uh, fragment of discovery uh, process, okay, from the very basic target research to basically finally to the lead optimization. Okay, so for example, to validate the activity of the target protein, to select those candidates based on the interaction to the target molecule. Finally, we can also study the a library of compounds with, with PIACO and finally characterize in, in detail the binding properties, the binding kinetics of the lead or heat compound with the target molecule. Okay, sorry, because then this, this has been moved, but basically just uh, to present that a, a fragment related, well, there are some challenges when, when we study a fragment interac interactions involving fragments in, 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 in general, okay, fragments are very uh, small molecules, and we, we are talking about uh, molecules from 80 to 300 three, three Daltons. So, uh, this, these are very small in mass. So, the change in mass that we will produce on, on the chip surface in this case will be very, very small. Okay, so we need normally to, to work with high sample concentrations, typically in the millimolar range. Okay, and there are some potential limits on, on, on the targets to, to be studied. Moreover, this, this kind of molecule, since these are the very first step 
when we try to develop uh, a final drug. OK, so this uh, are very small entities as well. They present low affinities uh, at the beginning for the target molecule. OK, and we are we are uh, talking about the millimolar range. So that means that, again, we need to use high high concentration of these molecules. OK, to. Uh, achieve a certain uh, binding site occupancy, OK? And, and then to be able to detect the binding. These high concentrations will present some solubility limitations, OK? So that means that we would have normally to work in the suboptimal concentrations, OK? Moreover, we can observe a series of secondary interactions because of this, because we, we are working, we are going we would need to work with very high concentrations. All of this means that we will need to work with very sensitive instrumentation. And this sensitive instrumentation is uh, well, uh, the, the, the current via core systems that we have. OK. So we know that um, via core systems will give us some advantages uh, regarding uh, typical uh, biochemical assays because the interference and sensitivity issues are uh, overcome uh, with uh, via core analysis. OK, we can, since these are very high sensitive instruments, we can measure even very, very small uh, molecules. And moreover, the sample consumption is much lower com than compared to other Typical methods as uh, X, X ray crystallography or NMR. Okay. The software, the via, the, the via core software also includes a series of, of uh, workflows for evaluation and so on, as, as I have commented. So we can reduce time in, in, evaluation, in, in evaluating the, the, the results. And in the end, we can confidently select those best candidates and validate this, this hits to prioritize these molecules for the further structural determinations. So in a typical workflow for fragment discovery is the one that is presented in here. So from a library of compounds, we can I think about hundreds of thousands of compounds. We should follow a series of steps to finally select just a couple of, of, of few of these compounds for a structural analysis and go into medici medicinal chemistry. Okay? And GIACO analysis can be applied in all of these steps, so from clean screen, binding level screen, affinity screen, and competition screen. Okay, so in the clean screen, basically what we do is just uh, identify those um, promiscuous binders, those, those molecules that exhibit uh, binding properties that are not of interest. OK. Then in the binding level screen, we will select those molecules that bind, uh, so to say, more efficiently to the target molecule. OK. And in the affinity screen, then we will select those binders based on the kinetics or affinity, in fact, of, of the interaction. OK. Then if we think of uh, applications of Yako technology in biotherapeutics development, we can use Viaco to, for example, assess or measure the active concentration of our molecules during all the steps in the process development of the molecules. Okay? We can get to know and reliable define the critical quality attribute attributes or what we call CQAs of the molecules. OK, so these are the properties of the medicinal molecule of the drug. That ensure or that will allow us to ensure that this molecule. Is safe and efficacy and, 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 and efficient. OK. We can run immunogenicity testing assays with Viacor as well and potency testing to get to know the biological activity of the molecule as part of the quality control of bi biological drugs uh, development and manufacturing. So, for example, in immunological studies, what we what uh, we normally do is try to detect and characterize 
anti-drug antibodies that are produced in, in our organism when uh, we are uh, administered with a drug. Okay. There's some significant advantages of using via call over other techniques such as ELISA, okay, since uh, I, as being a slavery free detection, this simplifies experiments. We can measure rapid on on of kinetics, okay, to detect potentially important low affinity antibody interactions, okay, that is very important because the first antibodies that we generate uh, normally against uh, a molecule, these are low affinity antibodies, okay, and it's very important to detect these antibodies in 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 seed samples, in plasma samples of uh, uh, in uh, immunized or vaccinated uh, uh, subjects, okay. And then, since we use very low uh, volumes of, of samples, that means that we will uh, consume a very low uh, serum plasma volumes that normally are precious. Okay. Ah, yeah, and and this this kind of analysis are suit suit uh, for analysis of complex even complex immunological responses in the context of therapeutic development. Okay, when we uh, uh, people working in therapeutic, in therapeutic development they would need to test the, immun the immunogenicity of, of these molecules okay, in the body. And we also can get to identify ADAs in the presence of a drug with the ecosystems. Uh, as an example of potential assays, well, uh, basically we can determine uh, the EC50 as a measure of potency and we can get to know this value from the dose response curve in, in the ACO systems, okay? So what we can do is we can inject a particular uh, drug, okay, a particular molecule of interest at different at, at several concentrations and then represent the binding response to the target molecule that we have on the chip versus the molecule a concentration, okay? And then we can create this curve and from here, get to know the EC50 and then what we can do is compare EC50 values of different drugs, different molecules or EC50 values uh, that we have obtained when we have, uh, uh, for example, change uh, any any step in the process in the in the uh, manufacturing process or we, uh, for example, for uh, we can study um, uh, the stability of the molecules by comparing uh, EC50 values of molecules that have undergone, uh, for example, I, some some stress. Okay, so just comparing EC50 is uh, a, a nice, but well, very very useful uh, way to 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 get to know the activity and in fact the potency of of the molecule. Okay. I have mentioned also that we can do uh, comparability studies. That means that we can uh, compare different molecules in terms of binding uh, to a target molecule. And this is very useful, for, uh, uh, particularly when we have complex interactions, okay? Uh, with simple interactions, we can, we can get uh, to compare the affinity value, for example, the KD, or we can compare the on rate, we can compare the off rate, but many times, uh, we are dealing with very complex interactions in which, or for which, we don't have a model to 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 fit the sensorograms that we that we that we have. So, if we don't have a model that we can use to fit the sensorograms, then we won't have reliable uh, kinetic parameters uh, or reliable affinity. Okay, because again, all these systems are based in kinetic models that we use to fit the sensorograms or the curves that we obtain okay so we have a nice application that is uh, called sensor comparison that compares the complete binding profile okay of the different molecules by using simple statistics so this will allows allow us to evaluate quantitatively okay the different uh, uh, molecules using an, a numerical measure of similarity that is called similarity score. Okay, so the similarity score is a value that the system will report us, telling us how similar are the different molecules. Okay, 
And as I have mentioned, this is applicable for all types of interactions, so we don't need to assume any interaction model and we don't need to fit our curves. This is very useful when, for example, we have complex interactions or we can use also sensorial comparison to compare different batches of the molecule that we, pro that we produce during a uh, process control. We can uh, study the effects of any change in the cell culture conditions, in the purification, formulation, or force degradation studies, or any change in a key reagent in the assay. So by comparing the binding profile of the molecules before and after the change. Okay. Finally, just to mention that we can also run a pit of binning analysis on, on Biaco. Okay. Basically, this uh, this pit of binning analysis, what they try to, or what uh, the objective of this of this analysis is to try to understand whether different antibodies normally bind to the same epitope or the, or the same region in the uh, target molecule or they can recognize different regions, different epitopes in the target molecule and then we can group antibodies that bind to the same region or the, to the same epitope in the antibody. Okay, this is uh, very useful, for example, in the development of vaccines uh, uh, for uh, diagno diagnostic test development, but also for biotherapeutic development. Okay, for example, if, if we would like to uh, create a drug that can be recognized by two different antibodies. <coughs> Sorry. Then I will just present to you some uh, works done with Biacor in, 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 in the COVID-19 research that you know is, is, is a trending topic nowadays. So Biacor systems have been used, for example, to understand why this new um, uh, COVID-19 with why why this new um, virus that we have uh, is much more effective or much more, uh, much more aggressive than than, than, the, the, than the previous ones. Okay, and basically, uh, well, this was done with the Acolis 100 system, on which uh, uh, the interaction between the different uh, variants of the virus, the previous ones and 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 the, and the current one has been a, a studied a, well, interaction between the uh, AC2 receptor, the human, the human AC2, uh, AC2 receptor, and finally what uh, uh, the, the, the research has show, shown was that the new variant of the virus bind, binds with much more affinity to, to this receptor. Okay? And, and this is basically the basis of, of uh, the bigger uh, uh, effectivity of, of the system, okay, and and, and the, the faster spread. But also, the ecosystem have been uh, used to uh, find neutralizing antibodies, okay, to be used as, as therapies uh, for this disease, and also in the development of vaccines for this for this um, disease. Okay, these are just three examples of the many works, many, many papers that have been published using Biakov in, in the COVID-19 research. Okay, so finally, I would just like to, to end this, this talk presenting the um, the Biakov, the product range that we have. Uh, so I have mentioned that um, we have a series of sensor chip surfaces, okay, to, to work with. We have um, a series of sensor chip surfaces on which we can immobilize uh, a particular protein, our target molecule, but we, we uh, directly. But we have also already prepared sensor chips containing uh, some 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 molecules like protein A, protein G, streptavidin, neutravidin. Okay, on which we can uh, attach uh, our our ligand molecules depending on their nature or the tag they they have. But we have also sensor chips. Uh, uh, developed for the uh, to study lipid and membrane membrane um, associated uh, proteins. Okay, and finally, totally customizable surfaces that consist basically on the gold surface that we can modify as, as we like. Moreover, we have a series of capture kits to facilitate uh, uh, 
the studies as well, so we don't have to, we don't need to spend time in finding out the best conditions for the attachment of the molecule to the surface. So we have a series of antibodies kit to attach mouse antibodies, human antibodies, or histac proteins, yeastic yes, tac proteins, or biotin tac proteins on the chip. Okay. Finally, I would like to present you the range of vehicle systems that we have currently in the portfolio from the uh, most basic system, but uh, uh, consisting of two channels and one needle. But even being the, mo the, the most simple system, we can run basically any kind of interaction analysis with the system. And the major difference with, well, as, as we um, move forward into, into, into the range, basically, and this is related to the capacity and the throughput uh, of the system. Okay, so finally, we arrive at the Via Core AK. It's the, the highest throughput system with uh, eight needles, eight channels. And in the middle, we have the Via Core 200, that is the most sensitive system. And the Via Core 200, that is our most flexible system. Okay, since um, we have a series of uh, Software embedded or, or uh, software embedded uh, functionalities that allow us, for example, the uh, to run immunogenicity testing, sensor gram comparison, and so on. All of all of these are present in the Via Corti 200 system. So, well, as a summary, we know that Via Core systems are used to monitor in a level free mode biological interactions in real time. Uh, we've seen that the application range of this system goes from protein research to drug discovery and like development and QC, okay? And what these systems do is what well, determine or characterize molecular interactions to give us an idea about the affinity, kinetics of the interaction, about active concentration of the molecules in the sample and specificity of these interactions, okay? Based on the SPR technology. So, Thank you very much, and please, if you have any, any question, I, I will be happy to, to answer and, and to comment anything. And for if, if you would like to have more detailed uh, information regarding a particular application, well, I, I have, I, I forgot to mention that, uh, well, for example, for the doping um, applications, basically what I would like to highlight is that the high sensitivity of, of these systems allow us to detect even these uh, uh, hormones or, or short peptides in 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 serial plasma samples. Uh, that is basically uh, what I understand in which uh, uh, what doping assays are, are based on. Okay. Thank you, Nestor. Yes, so thank you. We we'll stop sharing. Yeah. Good.